Hello, in today's episode of Bug Bounty Reports Explain, I will show you how it was possible to send a malicious GIF image in WhatsApp that could take control over whole Android smartphone. The video is based on an article by a guy named Awakened. Link, as always, is in the description. Low-level bug is something new on my channel and I hope you will enjoy that. Let's start with a GIF file. It contains multiple images and when those frames are being shown one after another, they create an animation. Usually, during such animation, frames have the same size. However, this is not enforced by GIF specifications. Frames can have different sizes, including frames of size 0. This is the structure used to store information about GIFs from native Android library. Most important for us is the raster bits buffer. It's where decoded frames are being stored. In a typical GIF where all frames have the same size, this buffer is just reused. However, when width or height of a new frame is greater than the previous one, the buffer must be reallocated. Reallocation is a combination of free and malloc functions. Malloc is a function used to allocate space. You need to use it every time you create a new variable or an object. Free is a function used to free the memory after it's no longer needed so that it can be assigned to another variable. And coming back to our GIFs, the amount of space to reallocate is just the size of the new frame. So if a GIF would have frames of sizes 4 on 4, 3 on 3 and 5 on 5, then after the first frame there is no need for reallocation, but after the second frame the buffer would be reallocated with 25 bytes of space. But what would happen if a new frame would have size 5 on 0? For the library, it was enough if a new width or a new height was greater than the one in the previous frame. So with frame 5 on 0, the reallocation would happen. But the malloc would try to reallocate 5 times 0 equals 0 bytes, so it would simply do nothing, and the reallocation would only free the memory. So if we would have frames of sizes 4 on 4, 5 on 0, 5 on 0, info raster bits would be freed after the first and after the second frame. And this is the double free vulnerability. But the question is, why is that actually a problem? It's the problem because in Android it leads to two subsequent memory allocations returning the same address. Size of those two allocations must be the same as the size of double freed buffer. So when the first frame was 16 bytes and it was double freed, then the next two memory allocations of size 16 will return the same address. Now let's see how this worked in WhatsApp. When you opened preview of files from WhatsApp application, GIFs were parsed twice. Let's create a malicious GIF that will trigger the double free vulnerability. It contains four frames and their sizes are 168, 0 bytes, 0 bytes, and the size of the fourth frame doesn't really matter. It's just there, so the GIF is valid. Before parsing frames, GIF info object is allocated with 168 bytes. This number is not dependent from the size of the first frame. It's just that the GIF info struct has 21 properties, 8 bytes each. And we chose the size of the first frame to match this number and not the other way around. You will see later why we needed that. Now it's time to parse the frames. First, raster bits buffer is allocated 168 bytes for the first frame. Then it's freed twice while parsing frames 2 and 3. Parsing frame 4 does not cause any problems. 
So now, after this buffer was double freed, next two allocations of size 168 will return the same address. Let's now see what happens during the second parse. Again, 168 bytes are allocated for a new GIFINFO object. Then, the first frame is being parsed and again 168 bytes are allocated for it. So this is the moment when malloc returns the same address again. So now both info and info raster bits are pointing to the same address. So such GIF causes WhatsApp to crash, but it wasn't our goal. Our goal is to execute arbitrary comments. Let's now take a look how this could be achieved. Soon after parsing each frame, info rewind function was called. Since info object has the same size and address as our first frame, the program now thinks that our first frame is the info object, so we have a complete control over it. And the program remembers where the rewind function was, so now we can prepare our first frame so that when the program wants to execute that function, it executes whatever we want. And what do we want? We want a reverse shell. Now stay calm people, because it's time for some assembly. To reach our goal, we need to set proper values to PC and X0 registers. Registers in assembly are like special variables that contain specific information. PC, program counter, stores the address of the next instruction, so we will want the address of the system function there. And to get it there, we need to replace the address of rewind function. And X0 register stores the first function argument, so we want to put our reverse shell comment in there. So now the researcher had to find a function that will set the X0 register to what he wanted and then jump to the system function. And this is the gadget that he found. I will explain it while at the same time creating the first frame of the GIF, which will at the same time be a GIF info object. The idea is that from rewind function we jump to this gadget, it sets the proper X0 register and then we go to the system function reaching our goal. Originally, rewind function was at offset OX80 of the info object. So this is the place where we put the address of this gadget. Then, LDR instruction from this gadget loads the value from register X19 with offset OX18 to register X8. X8 will be the address where we jump next. It's what BLR instruction at the end does. And X19 is our first frame, so at offset OX18 we put the address of the system function. The second instruction loads the value from our first frame with offset OX20 to register X0, which will be our argument. So in our frame, at this offset we put our command with reverse shell. And that's pretty much the whole exploit. The problem is that we need to get the addresses of our gadget and the system function. And there are two practical attack scenarios for this. One of them is that a malicious application installed on the victim's phone gets those addresses easily because they are native libraries and the addresses only change while the phone is rebooted. Then this application would create a malicious GIF, save it on victim's phone, and once the victim opened a preview in WhatsApp, the exploit would get triggered. The other attack scenario is that the attacker gets those addresses using information disclosure vulnerability, and then the attacker prepares the GIF, sends it to the victim, and once the victim opens the preview in WhatsApp, it gets triggered. You can generate your own malicious GIF using the repo that's linked in the description. But of course, the vulnerability has been patched and latest version of WhatsApp 
are no longer exploitable. The vulnerability affected WhatsApp, but it was actually a bug in native Android library, so I don't think the researcher got any bounty for it because WhatsApp security team just forwarded the report to library maintainers. Lately, both on YouTube and on Twitter, I did a poll asking you what you would like to see more on my channel and low-level bugs were highly rated, so I hope you liked this video. But if you have any other suggestions, feel free to comment them down below. If you have learned something new today, leave a like and leave a subscription. Thanks for watching and goodbye.